Hello and welcome to Cardiff Futures with me, Karen Ainley. My special guest today is Dr Thomas Woolley, who's a maths lecturer at Cardiff University. Now you're here to tell us why maths is so cool when a lot of people actually think it really isn't. So why is it? Well, it does take a certain type of person. It's not going to be for everyone, I completely understand that. But what I feel is that a lot of people get drilled out of mathematics at a very early age because they learn by rote. They're taught the times tables and the, you have to quickly immediately say, what is seven times six? And it paralyzes people with fear. So mass anxiety is a real thing. And what people have to realize is we now walk around with calculators in our pocket every moment of our lives. So getting over that anxiety and finding the joy in mathematics is something that I want to, to get out to kids and families and, uh, and everyone. And so maths is more than just numbers is what I really want to tell people. But have schools got it wrong then when it comes to teaching maths? I would say you, you have to learn the tools of the trade. You can't learn English without knowing the alphabet. But you don't focus then on each individual letter. That's where I think we've got it wrong. We have to understand it's more about the method, the technique, the algorithm. So if you ask someone to do a few percentages, they'll break down because they'll know it's numbers. But if they understand how to work out those percentages, rather than, and they can work out with their calculator, they'll feel much more comfortable. We, we do this with kids all the time. To do it in their heads, you don't get any feedback. You give them a calculator, you give them a worksheet, and so they can see the process, the algorithm and they're much, much happier. So what should schools in Wales be doing then to encourage more children to take up maths? I would say learn through play. There is a lot of ways you can get uh, mathematics to be active, to actually uh, apply it. So my, my personal uh, uh, discipline is uh, mathematical biology. So the idea is I did mathematics through undergraduate, graduate, doctorate, postdoctorate. I know maths inside. I've forgotten a lot of maths. But what I remember is how to talk to people and how to apply the maths that I know to their applications. And there's so many wonderful applications out there. So mathematical biologists, mathematical physicists, mathematical chemists, all the different types of ways you can learn mathematics through doing. Money, time, timetables, bus routes, all of these things. Apply your knowledge in real ways that people understand. You ask someone how to deal with money. They're happy. But you, some of the stuff that you're doing is, mm -hmm. it seems very way out. I mean, ah, you've yeah. been counting spots on fish and <laughs> stripes on zebras. I mean, why is that relevant? Why is it important? And I'm not so much counting, I'm trying to create them. So uh, this goes back to some work by Alan Turing, the idea of, he, he never asked small questions, Alan Turing. You know, he was always for the big ones. And his question here was, why should there be something rather than nothing? You know, why should we have pattern rather than just a gray homogenous blob? So as humans, we start out life as an egg, spherical egg, and then we turn into this thing. Uh, so what happens in between? You know, uh, how do we get those patterns? And so biologists can tell you what a pattern is for. You know, it could be for camouflage, it could be for mating, aggression, all those. Mathematicians then can hopefully put in the mechanism. How do you get that pattern? How do we change that pattern? Why is one pattern good for one animal? Why is one pattern good for another? And then, by, so it does seem a bit trivial, though. Why do we care about how the fish got its spots? So how did the it's, fish get its uh, spots? How did the fish get its spots? <laughs> oh, it's a good question. It comes down, as I say, to uh, Turing, 1952, 1952, all the way back. We've got no better idea than since then. So it shows you how good idea it was. It came from Alan Turing, and he put together two methods that shouldn't create patterns. And this is why it was such a genius idea at its time. Reactions and diffusions. Diffusion, you'll all deal with them in your everyday life if you put milk in tea the milk diffuses out. You don't get any patterns, no blotches, no stripes, tea, Co white tea. Reactions, you don't need to worry about those, they just interact and you get stuff, but no patterns. You put those two things together and all of a sudden patterns can appear. It wasn't just counterintuitive, it shouldn't work. You have diffusion which should wipe patterns out. Putting them together, spots, stripes, beauty. And why is it that some animals have spots and some have stripes? Ah, no, that's a very good question. We do, uh, as mathematicians, we can do it in a variety of different ways. You can make, you can say that they interact, these two interaction chemicals interact in a certain way, or some move in different ways. Uh, but we're waiting for biologists to catch up. So like I say, we've had this uh, mathematical idea since 1952. We've done lots of things. My whole thesis was on this idea. Biologists are still catching up with the idea. So we know how to deal with them. Biologists, when they get there, it'll be a bit more complicated, we think, than the mathematics can deal with. Well, it's such a fascinating subject. And thank you so much for sharing thank it you. with us. We could talk forever. But that's it from us for now. We'll be back again at the same time next week.